Hey everybody, so here we are back again with this HP TouchSmart, I think it's a 610 from 2011, and of course if you haven't watched my previous video, definitely check it out. Um, so we're visiting this machine again to finish it up, I didn't intend on making this video, or what, what I should say, I didn't intend on starting the video this early on in the process because I was intending on just starting this thing up with the network cable connected. And letting it download drivers and stuff, but watch what happens. And we'll start it up. <clears throat> so basically, what's going on is it's blue screening during startup. Show what's happening here. And there you go. And each time the stop air is different. Now I'm going to go ahead and yank out the Ethernet cable. And you can see the system is starting up. This is a well documented issue on this channel regarding Windows 11 and a very specific Ethernet driver from Realtek that is included in the USB installer. And of course, it probably only affects computers which do not meet the Microsoft Elite Class system requirements on Windows 11. Therefore, Microsoft probably really doesn't care. I mean, this issue was present in 23H2, and it's also present in 24H2, just to put it in perspective. So what i got to do real quick is I need to load my drivers onto my flash drive, because this has to be installed offline, of course. Now, I could technically I think this thing has Wi-Fi. Now, in a pinch, I could use Wi-Fi, but we're just going to use my uh, USB drive. Okay, so I'm going to plug in our USB drive. And of course, I have a video on this issue on the channel. As mentioned, it's a well-documented issue on this channel. It's a pretty easy fix. You just have to go on line and get the driver, but the problem is Railtech in their infinite wisdom took down <laughs> the server or uh, web hosting that hosted the driver. It's out there on the internet somewhere, but I gotta find it on the internet so I can update the link on my video, but I have it here. So there it is, Realtek giving Ethernet Family Controller. Let's go into Device Manager and look at what driver is currently installed. Got a couple of missing drivers there. Hopefully, those will get taken care of once we get online and get drivers downloaded from Windows Update. But yes, this driver right here is the culprit. This driver, and it's version 9.1.412.2015. Um, driver provider Microsoft, March 31st, 2015. So this is probably a driver that's been around for a little while, probably since the Windows 10 days. It's probably a Windows 10 driver that for some reason is not compatible with Windows 11. And I think this issue has been ongoing since 23H2, but of course since it affects computers that are not um, Elite Class systems, Microsoft really doesn't care. Now of course Elite Class is my own little nickname for <laughs> the Windows 11 system requirements. It's of course not an official Microsoft uh, branding. Although, who knows, maybe one day they might start calling them Delete Class Systems. Who knows? But um, let's go ahead and install this driver so we know what driver is there now. And it's funny it says install Windows 10. It's probably a newer driver that's compatible with both Windows 10 and Windows 11. Let's run through this setup utility. 
Now this driver that we're installing is not a brand new driver as you saw it was from 2022 from what I could see. However it's new enough that it's compatible with Windows 11 24H2 and stops this crashing blue screen issue. And it's, it's real funny because when there's no network cable attached everything just runs fine. You just don't have network access but then you plug in the Ethernet connection boom immediate crash or if it's starting up it crashes right during startup okay so now we'll go ahead and plug in well, first we're going to disconnect our flash drive And we're going to plug in our Ethernet cable, and this system this time should not crash. Alright, we have network access. So now it's just a matter of. First thing I'm going to do is run Windows Update, <clears throat> which is going to begin running on its own anyway, because we're dealing with Windows 11 Home. So we'll check for updates, download us all the updates, including drivers, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, everybody, so it's important that when you're installing updates, especially on a clean installation, you go into Windows Update and you go to, let's see here, Advanced Options, Optional Updates. And you can see we have 14 driver updates in here. So let's go ahead and uh, select these all not sure why it doesn't automatically install a lot of these but I mean it is what it is so we'll have it download and install these drivers okay everybody so I've gotten all the updates installed and um, also installed a few various applications on here so let's go and do a restart to demonstrate the startup speed of this machine. And I'm also going to hop into the BIOS because I had a user on the previous video question if the touchscreen worked in the BIOS, which I'm pretty sure it's going to be an obvious no, but we're going to look. So, for example, if I tap advanced, nothing happens. So. As I suspected, this old HP SEP utility does not recognize touch. So, in case anybody is wondering, there you go. Now, let's go and watch this thing start up. And this is not going to be the fast startup mode. This is going to be the conventional startup mode because we're doing a restart. And there we are. So, not the fastest startup out there, but definitely not bad for a 14-year-old system like this. And I'll definitely say it's when this thing gets returned to its owner, she's going to be really impressed with this thing. Matter of fact, she texted me over today um, asking about the progress on it. I told her that. Well, actually, she had a question about another computer that she has. And she asked about her baby, as she calls this thing. And I told her, I said, it's it's a uh, work in progress. I said, it's running a whole lot better than it did. And I'll, I'll say, um, it's pretty amazing for a computer that Microsoft would prefer you throw away. Um, computers like this with minor upgrades, I mean, RAM and Solid State Drive. I mean, you look at videos on this channel of me doing lots of RAM and Solid State Drive upgrades on older systems. 
and force installing Windows 11 on them and they turn out to be pretty decent machines so it's like okay why do we need to throw out perfectly usable hardware oh just because the CPU doesn't support TPM 2.0 or the system that supports uh, TPM 2.0 I mean come on it's ridiculous and for example you can see touch works now I did install the Windows 7 style menu as you can see it comes up with the uh, mouse cursor but if I use my finger the touch brings up the Windows 11 menu I may, I may actually end up uninstalling that Windows 7 menu from this thing just because of that but yeah really impressed with this thing it went from a nearly unusable or almost unusable system bloated down super slow and what was funny is she asked does the touch work she apparently she uh, was telling me that the touch wasn't working previously which I mean clearly it works fine now now one thing I needed to go ahead and do is I need to figure out how to get that touch keyboard working okay so if we go if we go to the uh, taskbar and right click and choose taskbar settings it's right in here so by default it's turned off there's also a virtual touchpad option there but um we're going to set this to always that way this right here will be available at all times so for example So you can see that works. Very nice. I think she'll be very happy with this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and restore our files, and I think that wraps up for this machine. So we have definitely breathed some new life into this 2011 HP Touch Smart 610. So the good news about Windows 11 here is supposedly for I've heard the 25 H2 I think that's what it's going to be called update is going to be like 23 H2 where it is a name with package supposedly to where you don't have to do a full upgrade install to get it so of course it'll be it will not show up in Windows update on systems not meeting the elite class system requirements but it can mainly be installed most likely just like you can with 23 H2 so Okay, but since I forgot to do the fast startup test, let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to shut this down. And we're going to start it back up. Again, that DB drive just sounds like it wants to break. So there you go. Pretty fast start up. And there we are. Anyways, um, that wraps up for this video. Hope y'all enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching.